So I think we were under underpowered to address um, cytokine release syndrome, and this is partially due to the fact that it's it can be effectively managed in the clinic now. So we did not have um, a, a large number of patients that had uh, grade three or four CRS. We did find some signal there within the CD4 T cell compartment, but uh, it wasn't so significant. Really, I think the the most important results in terms of uh, adverse events were found in relation to immune effector cell associated neurotoxicity syndrome, otherwise known as ICANS. Um, and there we, uh, we took exactly the same approaches that we took to identify T cell populations that are associated um, as we did with, uh, with looking at response. And we were surprised to see um, really no signal within the basic CD4, CD8 T cell compartments. But what we did identify was a um, quite a small cluster of cells, only a few hundred cells amongst the uh, over 100,000 that we profiled, um, that was significantly associated uh, and overrepresented amongst the infusion products of patients that had high-grade ICANs. And when we looked further into the characteristics of those cells, they had a very surprising transcriptional signature that was um, very much like a, a monocyte. So when we took the signature genes from, from the cells that we co coined ICANs associated cells uh, and compared it across normal cell subsets, they were most similar to um, conventional monocytes. However, they didn't have some of the uh, traditional characteristics that we expect to see from, from monocytes, um, CD14, CD16 expression, um, for example. So we couldn't really nail down their specific cell type. Um, so we've referred to them as being monocyte-like cells within the infusion products that are associated with neurotoxicity.